This playthrough is rated T for teen. It's time to find out how woods can have sharp teeth. Greetings and salutations, viewers, while I'm back here with another episode of Baldur's Gate 2. Ah, I heard what happened in Bloodmire Manor, friend. You're of stouter stuff than I. I mean, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance 2. In the last episode, we finished the, the mansion that Corpse has built as a... We found Dr. Luvia, but she ran away from us in her creepy manner and tried to poison us and send her fiends on us, but we were able to escape, and apparently some of her creations escaped, and maybe we'll run across it again them later, but uh, for now, it's time to leave the city, even though we took all this time to get here, and now we have to leave to go on to other things. So let's sell our stuff, though, before we go. Baldur's Gate sleeps easier with Luvia Vlotmeyer and her monsters gone, as do I. My thanks. Thanks, my friend. But anyway, let's sell some stuff. And before we go to the next area, make sure, let's see, actually, I'm going to keep the, I'm going to sell the stud leather gloves and keep the fine ones, because the fine ones could possibly be, um, workshopped, and that'll give me a chance to upgrade my gloves if I want to, so let's sell the st regular stud ones, because, uh, an item has to be fine or higher in quality to be, uh, workshopped, so, let me, uh, equip that, let me put that back on while we're here. Actually, I I'll probably should go over the workshop here eventually. Welcome back. Friend. Okay. And let's see. I'll we'll sell some stuff we're not going to use. I'll keep the grand staff. Sell the spear. Yeah, I don't need the mace. Dagger, nope. Spear dagger wouldn't be bad because of the quality of it, but yeah, we don't need it. And let's see. Just making sure to sell everything. Yep. Everything's good. Potions. Probably could sell a few of those since I haven't been using them as much. Although, now that I'm actively using my... Uh, abilities. I'll uh, probably end up using those more often. Let's see. We'll keep the might keep the fine ring because I could customize it if I want to. But anyway, workshop. But basically, what that is is um, you choose an item of fine quality or higher. You choose the item itself, and then you modify it. So let's just choose a fine ring, for example. So we need a rune stone and gems to do that. And the higher that, depending on how many rune stones you in, you could either have a straight up just high protection items so if i put in like a bunch of rune stones it'll be like a uh, fine ring of protection plus one if i put two in, it's two i know it, after a certain point you need to put in other things to increase its growth but that's the gist of the rune stone is the plus one element then we can put gemstones into it and depending on the gemstones a combination they'll add an extra thing like if i have a moonstone it'll add uh, at least for me it'll add the sprint ability and i think a ruby will add like the great fortitude skill or increase it because you can increase your skills more plus higher than the five that's in your inventory. You can do it via items. So this would make it a ring plus one. This would make it fine leather plus one. Grand stuff. So um, unfortunately, I don't really have much in the way of gems currently that I can actually use to upgrade. Right now, you can buy some from our friend here. Uh, the Moonstone is the one that adds the sprint ability, at least when it comes to the ring. It's different when it's like armor and weapons and stuff like that. Eventually, I want to save my money to upgrade my gloves that I've got like uh, at least find a decent set of gloves and boost those because that helps the monk the most because that's what you're well if you're using the, uh, on the unarmed version of the monk where you just use your fists because then you just beef up her gloves and give her like you know fire or ice or whatever attributes and stuff like that so right now it's not as important so I, I don't have to worry about it right this second but eventually I do because you know the game will get harder and we want ways to we want to actually have magical weapons or magical gloves and stuff like that to do like plus one extra damage stuff like that so actually I do have a rune stone I could do that now mm. Nah, we're, we're fine right now so anyway let's talk to the captain of the guard before we head out he's got another quest for us greetings I asked Randala to send strong reliable adventurers my way she spoke highly of you as you may know the city has been troubled by the Red Fang Marauders, whose main base we cannot find. Shouldn't we? Shouldn't you know we're already reliable because of us cleaning out the sewers? Did you forget that already? Um, I found this map on Argas. The Hands of Glory intended to hide their prisoners with the Red Fangs. Could I see that? Yes. This map indicates the exact location of the Red Fangs' main camp in the Cloak Wood. Rondala said you can handle the worst. What say I hire you on to take the Red Fangs out? Uh, it'll be my pleasure. Why not send an army to finish them? No, that's no good. The forest is dense. Any sizable force would make such a racket that the Red Fangs could easily slip away. Or lay in wait with devastating ambushes. No, a small group would be best. At least that's a legitimate, like, reason why maybe not sending in the whole army 
to take out like a group of people would work in that case. I'll be sure they regret coming to Baldur's Gate. Here. See? Move down the shore and approach from the eastern side. You'll have to traverse steep cliffs, but they won't be expecting an attack from there. Resistance should be light. Good luck, and may Helm guard your path. I shall return when the Marauders are destroyed. Now, although the dialogue makes it seem like she actually cares about Baldur's Gate, but no, she cares more about herself and her own goals. But you gotta give a reason to go, so, you know. But anyway, now we have a couple of different locations we can go to. So, we could go to the Cloakwood Lower Cliffs area, which, you know, the captain just told us about. Or we can go to the Wood of Sharp Teeth if you bought that map from our merchant lady there. So, uh, let's go there first, because that's a little bit easier. Now, before going here, I would suggest having a set of normal armor or set or or uh, equip yourself with leather armor or something similar and remove your metal armor at least for now because there's a encounter here that could possibly destroy your uh, armor which is pretty heinous and old D and D old D and D players know exactly of these creatures uh, that can that can mess your armor up man old school D and D man it you used to find ways to like get rid of your cool gear. So it would give you a reason to adventure on and, keep, and try to find more new gear. But man, oh man, all, all the reasons. Or if the DM just didn't want you to have it anymore and they would uh, have like some account, an encounter occur that would uh, steal your equipment or, or you get robbed in the middle of the night or something like that. But hey, like I said, it gave you a reason to keep exploring, you know, and kept uh, adventure power levels pretty low. Because depending on the group or edition you're playing of a D&D, &D, um, you could get pretty powerful and uh, start you know, stomping things, especially if you played games like Pathfinder or something like that. Which is just an offshoot of D&D. &D. You know, they basically wanted to take the more complicated idea of 3.5 and expand upon it. I've heard there's a second edition version of Pathfinder out, but I haven't played that one. I haven't played Pathfinder in quite a few years, actually. Mainly because... Well... It's one of those games that require... Uh, b battles take forever, and it bogs you down at a lot of numbers. Which is fine, except, I don't know, it just seems like I feel like when I play a, a, pa a Pathfinder game, I have to almost just say, well, I'm not gonna, we're not going to do any other role-playing for the night. We're just going to do this one fight. So be best be prepared for that. I think these guys are, um, not giants, um, ogres, I believe. Or gnolls. I can't really tell. I don't think they're gnolls. I think they're, I think they're ogres. Usually you can tell gnolls from it. But I have bad eyesight these days, so there's a random statue here. Oh, I thought there's more of this place. This is what I get for looking at the map instead of the uh, actual, like, screen in front of me. Because sometimes I'll have, like, tunnel vision when it comes to, like... Sometimes I'll look at the map in the lo upper right corner and look at that to see where I'm going, despite me actually looking at the location here. So, man, I'm going through these guys a little bit easier than the first game. Then again, I was playing as the wizard. All right, time to swap to this if we're going to be... Oh, really? If we're going to be playing this game, which we are. We're, we're playing Baldur's Gate, so... Yeah. Ow, come on. Yeah, quit blocking before I get to you. Man, he's, he's a quick one. He's a quick bugger. He's a quick one, all right. I'm going to go up there and jam my finger in his face. That looks like the... Good thing the archer versions don't uh, block. I mean, they could, but they don't. Oh man, you're fast. Oh come on. Hmm. Now let's get away from that ranged character, so we can uh, actually fight them without worrying about getting shot at. So don't worry about it. Tell them you can shot. Nice stun. Oh yeah, now I can stun guys again. Maybe I could go into stunning blow instead and purposely like stun their rears with the rear and gear yeah i forgot since we've been doing the house of a thousand corpses for a while i would forgotten that uh stuff can be stunned that's what happens when you fight a certain type of creature for a while you're just like you forget you can do other things to him there we go haha -ha, see stunning blow is awesome it has a really high chance of stunning just straight up stunning him yeah you can do it with your fist but if you want someone to be stunned so you can actually you know, kill him without the blocking all the time. Yeah, that's the way to go, man. That's where a lot of my uh, uh, mana is going to be going towards now is uh, stunning people if I can help it. Just have to be careful. 
Oh man, being able to guarantee stun things is awesome. Unlike other games where it's like a small percentage of stunning. You know, like, can you do it? I don't know, I can't. Maybe. I mean, yeah, the monk has, obviously, has that initial possibility to stun. But the percentage is raised because of just the whole, it happens every time she physically attacks someone, so there's a small percentage she'll just straight up stun them. And at least that's something. Some games where you just do an ability and you're like, well, maybe you'll stun them. But you're not sure when or how. It's impossible. And obviously you can't really stun bosses, so. Okay, that's our next area right there. We won't go through that yet. Let's finish this area before we continue on. Let's actually use some sprinting abilities. Oh. And you got quite a few people here. Maybe back off for a bit. Uh. Yeah, I'll take that yet. Yeah. Swarmy get. Man, I love stunning dudes. This is why I want to beef up the stun, uh, stunning blow ability. But first, obviously, get my, you know, get my uh, attack or how many attacks I can hit and the damage of my arm, arm strike to be at least as high as I can get it without items. But you have to have specific items to raise uh, or specific jewels and combinations to and get that ability. So there is a tr there is quite a few charts online like how the combinations work to uh, beef up your gear if you ever want to look into it I'll try to be a bit more I actually I've pretty much explained the gist of it it's just each armor piece and weapon and item ring and so forth has a different reaction to certain stones so like if something gives you sprint if you put it on a ring will do something different if you put it on like you know armor piece or a uh, weapon piece for example so You didn't say stun for long. You must have been a big fella. Oh, for some reason I thought that was a helmet I could grab. I don't know why. Actually, I don't really have to worry about stunning the archers just because, you know, they don't block all the time. But stunning people that can block, oh, yes. It's a dish best served cold. You know that for this area? All right. Yeah, we're kind of blazing through this area, but then again, it'd be the same thing if I was playing as Dorn. Just because of how, you know, fighters are usually, if you want just something that's pretty easy to go through without having a technical character, you know, you just play the fighter. Although technically the monk is a technical character because you have to use, you have to, you know, use stunning blow and other things like that. So, yeah, better, better save it. Always be, what is it, ABS, always be saving. Just in case I mess up, but these guys haven't been doing too bad, too much damage to me, so. Oops. Oh. No, I'm supposed to be able to go further in this place. Okay, what am I missing? Oh, I went to... Let's see. Oh, I guess it's... Hmm, I guess where there's more to the, this place. Hold on, let me... Uh, let me look at the... Oops. Hmm, okay. I guess that's it for this place. For some reason I thought there was a bit more to it. I must be misremembering. Let me check something else before I go. Oop, wait. Oh, I was I had, had that equipped instead. So. I guess that's it for this area. Hmm, okay. Let's go on to the Red Marauders camp. I could have swore this area was a little bigger, but uh, all right, let's go to the Cloakwood Lower Cliffs. Yeah, you get a little bit of experience, gold and stuff like that there. So, yeah, I don't know why I thought I thought that area was just a little bit longer. Like, uh, oh, we got a we got a, or, uh, goblins on uh, wolves. Kind of reminds me of the Hobbit, the the book. I should guess the movies too. I never did finish watching the movies. Mainly because I was just kind of like, it wasn't Lord of the Rings, and I don't know, just didn't have the same. And I know The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings are two different movies and books, but the books, The Hobbit in, in book form is more like a, a story you, you read to someone of, of someone's journey and stuff like that, while Lord of the Rings is like an epic, epic fantasy, you know, that type of thing. And uh, they're definitely two different beasts when it comes to uh, how they're told and portrayed. Oops the camera up back or move the map up there so I don't have to, so it's not in my way 
All right. You are dead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I probably wanted to worry about um, using a stunning blow here as much just because goblins don't uh, block all the time for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, think they would be a lot more dangerous running wolves that let them like hit do hit and run tactics, but no. Nope. I hope you're catching me on fire. I'm on fire! Put me out! Don't know where you get those fire arrows from, but uh you know, not for long. Ooh, 100 gold, nice. Just hiding there in that little crevice, huh? You're waiting for me, huh? Well you can't get me. You can't get me from here. Actually I can't even Oh, you can't get it through there. Uh -huh. yeah, let's just take Yeah, archers are kind of little punks in this game. They they like try to run away from you, so if you're chasing after them, you could possibly get smacked quite a few times on the way there. Anyway, anything else? Nope. Okay. I could use the use this to hit a couple of dudes. Ah, I was hoping that would quite a few of them there. How these goblins get so much more HP since last time we fought? Eh, just the, the belly of the beast when it comes to diff uh, keeping keeping stuff fun, but keeping stuff a little bit more challenging than just... Unfortunately, most games, especially early games, kind of suffer from this as well. Most games do the whole... To make a game, to make an enemy challenging, they just give them more HP and make them a, 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 a HP sponge, you know? Yeah, I don't know why I did that whole jumping thing. Uh, we could have gotten there the legit way, too. See? Could have just walked over there. But I wanted to jump, dang it. Okay, so some of them do block. They just didn't do it as often as I thought they would. Well, you got a stunning below the face, then. This is what you get, man. Alright, nothing there. Oh. Now, don't have these goblins block. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. Oop. Yeah, good thing I have this spinning kick. Spinning. Or how's, how's Chun Li do it? Spinning up kick. Or something like that. Ah, keep. It's not useful to use the spinning kick on one dude. It's better if you can hit multiple people, then it makes use of your mana. I keep wanting to like keep the camera close to me, but uh, I keep the analog stick I use is a little wonky, um, so sometimes it'll flick back to uh, over in, over in mode when I don't want it to. So, Let's see, we can just go and we can climb all the way up here. Is there, is there a reason to like? No, not really. Yeah, see, there was no reason for me to do it. I just wanted to be. I just wanted to be cute. Tight road rocking, baby. Ooh, got a nice crit on that one. Yep, I actually didn't mean to heal. I meant to use my rejuvenation potion. I'm like, yeah, I might as well use it. Oh, man, get some nice combos there. Or nice grouping there. Gotta keep them all together. Nice grouping. I see you hit the bullseye. No, nope, nothing this way. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was a weird... Weird glitch right there. Man, just catching all the glitches today. I don't remember the old game being like that. Hmm. Maybe just forget some things while playing. Either that or have an early version of the game. It, it is quite possible. Back in the early days, I used to buy games like on launch. Now I'm taking quite a bit of damage just to heal. I don't so much do that anymore. Now I just wait for games to, because of Mainly because of how modern games are so buggy upon release, it's better just to wait until they've been fixed through online patches. The only bad thing about that is that if you ever buy that game new or don't have internet access, you're basically buying a buggy game from the start, which that's really bad design. You know, but like if you have no online connection, you're you're most likely playing the ver worst version of the game. You know. Then again, back in the day, games would sometimes get released buggy too. I mean, what is it, Final Fantasy, like, 6 is a good example of a game that's still playable and everything, but there's so many mechanics in that game that don't work, that are buggy. You know, magic defense doesn't work and all this other stuff, you know. But you can still play it and beat it, it's just, you know. It just goes to show. Nowadays, people have, like, you know, homemade patched the game to a, 
uh, make sure it works properly. I got a dagger there. Nice. Something to sell. More money for me. No money, no money, no money. Oh yeah, one day I need to show off like her saying stuff when you stay put. If you stand still for too long, um, any of the characters do this. They'll they'll start s talking to you or they'll either talk to themselves or sometimes they'll break the fourth wall depending on the character you're playing as. Like I think uh, I think Viadra here says something about choking you with your controller if you don't get her to do something. Yeah. Area of uh, archers, huh? Yeah, the flight arrows would have been pretty good here, actually. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what you get for having a bow. If you don't kill me first, then you're dead. <laughs> Stop it. You are already dead. I'm going to go and save it again. Just in case. Although I don't remember this section. A dead rust monster. That's a rust monster. Normally harmless creature whose lightest, whose lightest touch destroys for Pharaoh's metal. The raiders may have another one trapped within, so it might be wise to unequip any metal weapons or armor. A rust monster attack won't, uh, won't attack unless it smells iron or rust to eat. This is what I was talking about. For some reason, I thought the previous area had the rust monster too, but no, it's this area. But yeah, we're going to kill him anyway. But I can't... Oh, be, oh, sorry. I thought that was actually him. No, it's a dead rust monster. Yeah, D and D rust monsters have a chance of just straight up eating your, your armor and weapons and stuff like that if it's metal, whether it be magical metal and stuff like that. Get back here. There we go. But yeah, it has. I forgot what the percent chance is of losing your weapon. But yeah, you need to unequip. You need. Wow, that guy had a lot of HP. Um, yeah, you just need to unequip your uh, metal armor, which I'm not. Don't have any because I'm not playing Dorn. So, and I don't have a. Uh, Viadra's uh, armor proficiency maxed out, so I can't I can't equip those medals anyway. This is what happens when a rust monster gets stunned and doesn't initially care about you. Oh, we got more uh, ogres. <laughs> Did I end up killing the guy who wasn't stunned? Hmm, funny. Yeah, see how my controller keeps like every once in a while the map keeps resetting back to over over arc over land mode or whatever. Ah, these guys are getting a few good crits in. And they're stunning me when they, when they hit me, so yeah, let's do a little bit of healing. Alright. It's only a temporary wound. No worries. Ow. Yeah, I probably should do it anyway, just in case. You never know. Alright, anyone else around here? Nope. I grab all the treasure. Probably. Alright, let's head on to the uh, the upper woods the cliffs. Or the, through the through the cave and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. It basically just takes us to the other side of the map here. If we go over there, see uh, the cave. It's just technically it's its own map. So... Oh, the, the sunny block actually finish them off? I think it did, actually. That's funny. You goblins are little buggers, aren't you? You know much for, you're much for my fist. My fist of fury. Yeah, luckily these guys. This must be... I bet this place is supposed to be a, a palate cleanser for the previous area. Because those guys were a little tough in their own way. So this is a, like, oh, these guys are tough still, but, you know, don't worry about it too much. As long as you're generally aware of what you're doing, you should be fine. At least on hard mode, anyway. But soon, it won't be so long before we fight more nasty creatures. And actually give D&D its name, you know, or D&D its namesake, the fighting of crazy monsters, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, it depends on the campaign you run, I guess. I tend to use fantastical monsters every once in a while, but I do try to use, like, you know, character settings, humans, and all that other stuff against other humans and monsters and settings and, and groups and all that. But, yeah, it depends on the group you play as, too. Maybe some people like playing the monster hunter types who go into dungeons and find treasure and all that other stuff. Really, for me, it depends on my mood. 
If it's a straight up just dungeon crawling, that's all it's all about. Yeah, I'd probably get bored with it pretty quickly. I do need some story to uh, get me enticed. That's why I'm not a big fan of roguelikes and all that. Because most of them have really simple stories, and it's just like, do this, you know, get to the bottom of this place and get treasure, you know, or survive till the end. And I'm like, eh, okay, I guess. I'll play through those games once, and then I'll be done with it. Probably never to play them again. And again, I guess there's a lot of games like that, but I try to, like, games that either have interesting stories or mechanics, I'll, I might play again down the line. Usually the story is interesting, I'll play it again down the line. Yeah, man, getting a lot of weird glitches going on here. That's fine, I don't have to. I can just ignore the glitches. Alright, nothing else? Okay. Now we can go back. Oh. Almost missed the sword. Could've I need to seal steal it. Take it on my own. I'm an adventurer. We can't live without gold. We need to put it in our veins. Oh, whoops, I had the stun still back on. Yeah, people are getting some pretty good smacks on me there. You can see my HP just dropping like a stone. Oh, it's fun, kind of funny how I sometimes will he heal after I've killed everyone. Because, you know, the whole re HP regeneration thing, I could probably, you know, get that all back. Well, I, just by standing around, but I don't want to stand around on screen. I'd rather do it in between episodes. Because that way you don't have to watch me just standing in place for a few minutes. Because that's, that's boring. Then again, I'm not a big fan of, uh, ooh, okay, good, some damage to me. I saw my HP go, whoop. I'd be like, oh, no. Oh, I'm out of, I'm out of, uh, oh, I'm out of HP, or out of HP. Okay, let's, uh, let's recall back so we can sell all this stuff. <clears throat> Want to grab it all, man. Pokemon. All right, what do you got, man? Is it true that you're going after the Red Fangs? Best of luck, friend. They've been a thorn in the city side for too long. Where are you getting all this info from? Who's talking? I want names and numbers and locations. It's oh, whoops. Simple. I didn't mean to. Right. Arms and armor? Okay, let's I'll sell our stuff. You need right here. Ooh. Oh, no, a grand staff can be a... Uh, remarkable mace. Oh, yeah, I could get rid of the... Should have uh, kept that nice cross... Or nice... Uh, um, short bow. Yeah, it's not weapons, that big a deal. Yeah, so that. Ooh, imperial padded helmet. Oh, but. Right yeah. And we don't want to use shields. Yeah, keep the shiny amulet. Probably should sell. I don't have to keep all these rings. At best, you might want to keep two rings for the purposes of uh, customizing them. Do I need to buy anything at this point? Probably not. There's really. His, his, uh, it isn't until, like, I think Act 2, till his stuff, like, really change, uh, mod goes up. I mean, yeah, I could buy, like, the Keen Amulet or something like that. Which gives, that would give plus one to Wisdom. Which, I don't even think I really need Wisdom, really. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything anyway. Yeah, we're fine. We all fine. Well, it is until the later acts till we really have to really start worrying about. <laughs> was the was the creatures waiting for them to come? It's like I know he, she used a potion of recall. She'll be back soon, and when we do, I'll stab her. You know, and it didn't quite work out in your favor, to tell you the truth, because I'm alive and you're all dead. Uh. Man, being able to stun enemies kind of all, kind of makes make, makes an OP ability. Yeah. But we are playing hard mode, so. It doesn't feel... I feel like they did d generally make this game easier, because hard mode does not seem like the same hard mode from the previous game. Even when I play characters that could s uh, survive those encounters, like the the dwarf and uh, dwarf in the previous game, like, playing hard mode, I still felt like I had a little bit of trouble getting through some areas, you know what I mean? Here, it just seems easy. Then again, we are still in Act 1. I think Act 2 is when it 
did start getting a little challenging, so maybe we're just waiting for the back change to really to really increase the difficulty. Whoops. Oh, grab boys. Yeah, some of the kobolds have a, or not kobolds, goblins have a. Ooh, ow. That poison's the, uh, that poison adds up, baby. Let's uh, back up for a bit. Where does that archer do? Did I? Oh. You're hiding in the trees, man. They came out of the trees, man. I missed Crackle. Or whatever his name is. The, uh, the elves that, uh, that make cookies or whatever. Oh, did I, I heard metal drop, but it was like, hmm. So you got a knife. All right, we'll sell that later. You'd think at some point all the enemies would be like, yeah, she, this girl's crazy. Perhaps we shouldn't fight her. She's like, she's she's chopped, going through all our dudes like butter. Oops, didn't mean to send that guy just because there's no point. They think they back off. They're like, oh, man, hey, man. Hey, lady, you can take whatever you want, man. It's no biggie. Oh, there he is. Oh, there it is. Man, sometimes the... Uh, Sometimes hit me from the side, man. Takes out that damage, man. Hopefully, I think I think not too far off from now. I think we'll eventually start getting a. Uh... Oops! Oh, I wasn't ready to save yet, but sure, I can do that now. Sooner, I think soon we'll start getting better potions as well. Uh, back off from those guys for a second. More archers. The bane of every every fighter's existence. Unless you're like a, a tank character in D and D, where you can take like a million points, of, or you can take all the hits because your AC is high enough. That looks like someone cast a bless on a, the enemies because they are glowing, which means they have a easier chance to hit and stuff like that. I think in some variations, Bless also gives you um, uh, HP as well, depending on which version of D and D you play. Some will be all Bless gives you is just a, a better chance to hit that type of thing. While uh, while in some versions are a chance to hit and uh, and some a uh, small amount of HP. It was like a poison. Oh, what was that? Was that a magical goblin? I think so. He took a lot more hits than the regular goblins, which is weird because wizards are, you know, freaking glass cannons. So they they have a glass jaw. They can't take a punch, you know, usually get knocked out of one hit if they get hit. Because usually the wizards will have, like, spells up to try and get you to not even hit them in the first place, you know. Should sure, almost be my call out here pretty soon. I was hoping to get to be done with the Red Fangs area. Uh, before the end of the episode. Uh, we'll see what happens. Man, this stunning fist is awesome. Or stunning blow. There's the other. I thought I fished that one guy. Ooh. I, guess, I guess it is starting to build up now. Because now we're starting to take some pretty... Pretty... Penis hits. Where are you? There you are. It's like I had trouble seeing where you were going. Or where you were. Where's you at, man? Where's you at? Ooh. Man. Ooh, man. Yeah, because Sunny Blood doesn't seem to take much uh, MP use from... <laughs> I'm not having to use my rejuvenation uh, potions as often. Or if I need to go back down that way, I probably do. I think I might have to. Let me, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go back. Guess I went a bit too far. Oh, good thing I went back because I missed some gold. I missed gold! I don't want my gold, man. 
I'm an adventurer, dang it. Not a not a uh, peacekeeper. Not Yeah, your bless ability doesn't work if I if I hit you, dude. Because your ability to hit me does not prevent my ability to hit you. Anything in this little crevice here? Hello. Got one on a ward. Sixteen birds and five fist trees. What funny little things. What funny little things. The things that they do. What funny little things. I don't know why I thought of that all of a sudden. Mainly because of the scene of the Hobbit in the books where they have to climb up trees to get away from the uh, ward riders. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that for a second. Man, blood and guts everywhere, baby. This place is bigger than I thought. No. There's the there's the buffer. There's the wizard. Wizard dies first, punk. You can't get away when I when I freaking stun you. So that's where he was at. Yeah, that's a cheap trick to. It's like who's buffing all these enemies? Where are they are? Where are they at? And they're way far away from us. Alright, I think I'll finish off this area as soon as we get to scene transition and then we'll call it a call it an episode. Should be far too far off. Yep. There we go. Yep. Need more glitchy trees apparently. Oh, I thought that was a treasure chest for a second. I was like, what's over there? Over there. Nope, nothing over there. Oops. We don't need a crushing blow to the tree. I mean, I guess we could. It did deserve it. Nature's kind of a punk in D&D. Because there's so many creatures that defend the land, you know. Aha. Yeah, stunning people makes uh, wizards very bearable because as soon as you smack them with it they're they're in place baby did you hit me with slow oh yeah i think you did because uh i'm not moving as fast as i used to i think in dd if i recall slow like reduces your movement speed by like half you your ac is lower because obviously you move slower uh, i'm trying to i think well depending on which version of it sometimes you lose turns or you'd only get like half an action during a turn or, or during a, a combat round or something like that Like you could only move or attack or something like that, so. Now yeah, let's look at the. That's a nice, nice grouping there. I mean, Sunny would be good, but I think the ability to hit like five dudes possibly with one kick is pretty good. Oh man, these guys are all smacking me at once. Doing a decent amount of damage. And it just goes to show, if someone if 20 people attack you with a spear, you know, your your body's not going to handle it as well as you think. More gold. Let's see. Oh, more people over there. Where does this take me anyway? Uh, okay, that's the hidden base itself. So, yeah, let's call this and then we'll... Finish this area off, and then we'll tackle the base. We're almost getting a level two. So close, I can smell it. If only had high wisdom. Oh well. But unless unless you have a decent amount of wisdom already, I don't feel like it's worth putting points into wisdom at, uh, on certain characters, even if it makes it easier for them to level up. But what is easier to level up? Will we be able to defeat the Red Marauders? What will our reward be? And where to go to next? Find out next time in the next episode of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.